My name is uh, Dennis Gonzalez. Um, I'm a retired scientist now, but um, I uh, retired from Cornell in 2012 and uh, went back to the Big Island on Hawaii to direct the USDA Research Center, the USDA Pacific Basin Agriculture Research Center. I left in 2002, I'm sorry. And then I retired at the end of 2012 from USDA. I just come to Cornell in 1978, and I went back to Hawaii where I was born and raised, and they told me that, you know, there's this virus disease on the Big Island where 95% of the papaya is being grown, and this virus disease is only 19 miles away, papaya ring spot virus. And what would happen if the virus got into the main papaya growing area? I said, it would be ruined. So in 1970, that started our research efforts to try to develop control. And the first part was just to characterize the virus. But starting in 1985, we started in earnest to try to develop a virus-resistant transgenic papaya. And lo and behold, in 1991, um, we had successfully in introduced the code protein gene of the papaya ring spot, and our mechanism was just like vaccination, that we utilized part of the pathogen to develop a plant that was resistant to it. So we got the cold protein gene, cloned it, and got it into the papaya using the gene gun. And in 1991, the, I was working with, again, the University of Hawaii, um, USDA, a graduate student there, and Jerry Slidon from the Upjohn Company. And, um, 1991, we had uh, some genetically engineered papaya in a greenhouse in Geneva, and one line was called line 55-1. And I'll never forget this day. I went down, had all the clones of this line, and I inoculated them with the virus. And two weeks later, I go by and say, hey, my gosh, this papaya is growing very well, whereas the control that had no genes was not. And that was the start of getting success after six years of research. We had developed the papaya in 1991, started field testing in 1992. The virus entered the main papaya growing region in 1992 and, and chaos. By 1994, all of the, um, that area where 95% of the papaya was grown was, was being infected but we had a potential solution. We did the research, it's just like a football game. You started the zero-yard line, you want to develop resistance. Oh, you got resistance, you tested, you're down at a 20-yard line. And in football, they call that what? The red zone. This is where you differentiate the man from the boys. You're either going to score or you're not going to score, especially when there's only two minutes left in a football game. Well, that's what was happening in Hawaii. The industry, by 1998, had lost half of its crop. All of the papaya were infected by the virus. We had a potential solution, but how can we get it to the growers? We worked through deregulation, we tested it for safety, and all of these things. And in May 1st, 1998, literally six years after the virus, entered Puna, where 95% of the papaya was being grown on the Big Island. We released the seeds of the rainbow and the sun of papaya to the growers and essentially gave them free. It was done all by public sector. And it's really the only public sector transgenic crop that has been commercialized and for sale. So in short, that's a papaya story, but fast forward to now, 1998 is what, um, uh, 14 years later, um, it's uh, the transgenic papaya occupies 85% of Hawaii's production. So it literally uh, saved the industry.